Welcome history enthusiasts to an immersive journey into the life and legend of William Wallace, the iconic Scottish hero whose bravery and resilience have captured the imagination of generations. Join us as we traverse the rugged landscapes of medieval Scotland and delve deep into the heart of one of history's most inspiring tales. The Land of the Scots In the misty highlands of Scotland, where rugged mountains loom over deep locks and ancient castles stand as silent witnesses to centuries of history, lies the land of the Scots. Here, amidst the untamed beauty of the landscape, a proud and fiercely independent people forged their identity in the fires of adversity. From the mighty clans of the highlands to the bustling towns and villages of the lowlands, Scotland was a land of contrasts. United by a shared sense of heritage and a deep-seated desire for freedom. So what challenges did the Scottish people face in asserting their independence in medieval Scotland? Shadows of oppression enter Edward Longshanks, King of England, a ruthless monarch whose ambition knew no bounds. Determined to extend his dominion over the unruly Scots, Edward imposed harsh taxes, enforced English law, and appointed his own loyalists to positions of power across the realm. But the proud Scots refused to yield, their simmering resentment boiling over into open rebellion as they fought tooth and nail to resist English oppression and preserve their way of life. But how did King Edward's policies fuel resentment and resistance among the Scottish people? Rise of a Warrior Against this backdrop of turmoil and strife, a young man named William Wallace emerged as a beacon of hope for his people. Born into a land torn apart by conflict, Wallace witnessed firsthand the injustices inflicted upon his fellow Scots by their English overlords. Inspired by a deep sense of duty and a burning desire for justice, he took up arms against the oppressors, vowing to defend his homeland and protect his countrymen from tyranny. So, what motivated William Wallace to take up arms against the English crown? The Outlaws' Rebellion As Wallace's legend grew, so too did his reputation as a formidable warrior and a cunning strategist. Leading a band of loyal followers, he waged a relentless guerrilla campaign against the forces of King Edward, striking fear into the hearts of his enemies and rallying his fellow Scots to the cause of independence. From daring raids on English garrisons to audacious ambushes in the wilds of the Highlands, Wallace's tactics confounded his foes and inspired hope among his countrymen. How did Wallace's guerrilla tactics challenge the might of the English army? But it was on the battlefield that Wallace truly distinguished himself as a military leader of unparalleled skill and bravery. From the fields of Stirling Bridge to the slopes of Falkirk, he led his outnumbered and outgunned forces to stunning victories against the might of the English army, proving that courage and determination could triumph over overwhelming odds. With each triumph, Wallace's legend grew his name becoming synonymous with the struggle for Scottish independence and the defense of liberty. What role did William Wallace play in the pivotal battles of Stirling Bridge and Falkirk? Betrayal and sacrifice. Yet even as Wallace's star ascended, dark clouds gathered on the horizon. Betrayed by those he once counted as allies and hunted by the agents of King Edward, he faced betrayal and treachery at every turn. But through it all, Wallace remained steadfast in his commitment to the cause, refusing to compromise his principles or abandon his people in their hour of need. And when the time came to pay the ultimate price for his defiance, he did so with courage and dignity, his sacrifice serving as a rallying cry for generations to come. How did betrayal and sacrifice shape William Wallace's legacy, legacy of a hero? Though Wallace may have fallen on the field of battle, his legacy lives on in the hearts and minds of all who cherish the ideals of freedom and justice. From the stirring ballads of the Scottish bards to the towering monuments that dot the landscape, his memory endures as a symbol of resistance and resilience in the face of oppression. And though centuries have passed since his passing, 
His spirit remains a guiding light for all who dare to dream of a world free from tyranny. How has William Wallace's legacy inspired future generations to fight for freedom? Echoes of Valor Across the centuries, the story of William Wallace has inspired countless acts of courage and defiance in the face of adversity. From the battlefields of Bannockburn to the halls of power in Westminster, his legacy continues to resonate with all who yearn for freedom and justice. And though the world may have changed since his time, the principles for which he fought remain as relevant today as they were centuries ago. How does William Wallace's story continue to inspire acts of courage and defiance today? In the footsteps of a hero. Today, visitors from around the world flock to Scotland to walk in the footsteps of William Wallace, retracing his journey from humble beginnings to legendary heroism. From the imposing walls of Stirling Castle to the windswept moors of the Highlands, they pay homage to a man whose courage and sacrifice changed the course of history. And as they stand in awe of his legacy, they are reminded that the spirit of freedom and defiance that he embodied lives on in each and every one of us. How does retracing William Wallace's footsteps in Scotland contribute to keeping his legacy alive? The flame endures. In closing, let us remember that the story of William Wallace is not just a tale of one man's struggle against oppression, but a testament to the power of the human spirit to overcome adversity and inspire change. And as we honor his memory and celebrate his legacy, may we always strive to uphold the values of freedom, justice, and equality for all. How can we ensure that the flame of William Wallace's legacy continues to endure for future generations? In the end, William Wallace may have been a man of his time, but his legacy transcends the boundaries of history to become a timeless symbol of courage, resilience, and hope. And as we look to the future, may we draw strength from his example and continue to fight for a world where liberty and justice reign supreme. Hello and welcome to our channel. In today's video, we're going to dive into the centuries-old mystery surrounding one of history's most legendary folk heroes, Robin Hood. Was there ever a real person behind the myth, or is Robin Hood simply a fictional character of medieval legend? Let's find out in this video. The legendary figure of Robin Hood has captured the imagination of generations, but attempts to uncover the true origins and identity of this folk hero have proven evasive. The quest to ascertain the historical authenticity of Robin Hood is akin to untangling a complex web of fragmented records, literary embellishments, and oral traditions that have accumulated over centuries. While the historical record offers tantalizing glimpses and clues, any definitive evidence regarding a real Robin Hood remains frustratingly elusive. This raises a central question that has long intrigued scholars. Was Robin Hood a real medieval outlaw, or merely a romantic figment of legend? The earliest known references to Robin Hood appear in the 14th century, over 150 years after the purported setting of his tales in the 1190s during the reign of King Richard Bess. This already cast doubt on the idea that Robin Hood was a real contemporary of Richard the Lionheart. 
William Langland's 1377 poem The Vision of Piers Plowman contains a passing mention of rhymes of Robin Hood, suggesting the legend was already well established in oral tradition by this time. Further references appear in legal records and court rolls dating between 1226 and 1394, with fugitives sometimes listed under names like Robin Hood, Robin Hood, or Robe Hood. However, historians debate whether these are true references to the outlaw or simply generic surnames taken from the existing legend. The Robin Hood recorded on the Yorkshire Assize Rolls of 1261 as a fugitive, for example, bears the statement for breach of the peace in 1272, likely too late a date for the legendary Robin Hood active in the 1190s. While tantalizing, these scattered written references fail to confirm any definitive biographical details regarding a historical outlaw behind the legend of Robin Hood. They do indicate the tales were circulating for over a century before more structured literary accounts began to take shape in the 15th century. Two early ballads, Robin Hood and the Monk, dated around 1450, and Robin Hood and the Potter from C1475, represent some of the first known attempts to record the oral traditions in writing. These popular songs and stories were likely embellished over generations before being set in print. King John and his troubled reign. One intriguing aspect of the Robin Hood legend is its frequent association with King John, who ruled England from 1199 to 1216 between the reigns of his brother Richard the Lionheart and his son Henry III. The turmoil and despotism that marked much of John's tenure would seem to provide an ideal setting for the emergence of a heroic outlaw defending common people against tyranny. In early versions, Robin Hood is described as being pardoned by King Richard and taking up his banditry in loyalty to the absent monarch after Prince John assumed power. This aligns with the far more favourable popular image of King Richard the Lionheart as a brave and heroic warrior king, contrasted with the weak and vindictive rule of King John. Adding Robin Hood as an antagonist of the villainous John serves both to embed the legend in a specific time period and provide social commentary on good versus evil rulers. Even if invented, Robin Hood as a heroic champion of justice opposing the corruption of a tyrannical monarch resonated with medieval audiences and added moral legitimacy. King John certainly presided over a tumultuous period in English history rife with political turmoil and conflict. His disastrous military failures led to English defeats by the French and the loss of Normandy, weakening the Angevin Empire. John imposed hugely unpopular taxes to fund his wars, such as the 1207 10th levied on all revenues. Nobles bristled under his heavy-handed rule, which along with high taxes led to a revolt by the northern barons. John was even excommunicated for a time by Pope Innocent III during a papal power struggle with England placed under interdict. Conditions were certainly ripe in John's England for the growth of legends centred on commoners and outlaws resisting abuses of feudal authority and excessive taxation by the king. The oppression and unrest of the time provides a compelling background for the appeal of a heroic outlaw fighting injustice. The Evolving Tales of Robin Hood as an oral legend, the tales of Robin Hood evolved gradually over generations before first appearing in literary form. In the process, they absorbed mythic elements from folklore motifs like the Green Man and Little John's Companion, the Jolly Giant. Ballads and stories circulated as popular entertainment, with minstrels and storytellers adapting the legends to appeal to new audiences. The tales therefore exist in many variant forms rather than any single definitive narrative. The earliest written account is generally considered to be Robin Hood and the Monk, penned around 1450, 
and drawing on established traditions. In this lengthy ballad, Robin Hood robs a traveling monk and slays him after the duplicitous monk betrays him to the sheriff. It features familiar characters, including Little John, Much the Miller's son, and Will Scarlet, and makes no mention of Maid Marian or Robin's love interest. Scholars see Robin Hood and the Monk as a transitional work retaining artifacts of oral tradition while taking steps towards a structured literary form. The later ballad, Robin Hood and the Potter, from C1475, builds upon these foundations. It continues the theme of Robin Hood tricking personas of authority, in this case, duping a potter by trading clothes and selling the potter's goods before posing as a fellow craftsman. Robin Hood and the Potter incorporates other well-known motifs like Robin Hood's unmatched archery skills and the safe refuge of the Merry Men in Sherwood Forest from the power and punch of the law. The early printed texts, with the introduction of the printing press to England around 1475, the Robin Hood legends transitioned from oral retellings and handwritten manuscripts into printed anthologies. Among the earliest published accounts was Robin Hood and Little John, along with the aforementioned Robin Hood and the Potter in William Copeland's printing between 1515-1560. Robin Hood and the Friar similarly appeared in printed form around this time, while the prolific printer Winken de Ward published Robin Hood and the Sheriff in the early 16th century. These popular anthologies gathered and fixed the English oral and literary traditions in affordable printed form for the first time. Standard themes and conventions emerged across the various tales, such as Robin Hood and his merry men poaching the king's deer in Sherwood Forest and evading capture by the Sheriff of Nottingham. Robin competes in archery contests, courts Lady Marion, and faces down belligerent knights to protect commoners from harm and extortion. Print introduced more consistency to the legends while spreading them to wider audiences across England. Robin Hood on the Early Modern Stage Another major vector for dissemination of the Robin Hood stories was the theatre. As early forms of English drama developed in the 16th century, Robin Hood was quickly adapted for the stage. Plays like Robin Hood and Little John, My Sea, 1505-1510, drew upon similar themes as the ballads but incorporated staging, props and conflict scenes that proved popular with audiences. In fact, Robin Hood is considered to be one of the earliest English outlaw heroes adapted to the stage. Amateur dramatic productions called Robin Hood Games continued the legend and were especially popular during May Day festivals and summer months when poaching restrictions were relaxed. Professional acting troops also adopted the outlaw character between the 1570s and 1590s. References to multiple plays titled Robin Hood throughout this period suggest an ongoing comic theatrical tradition. Robin Hood's story clearly appealed to all levels of Elizabethan drama. Scholars debate exactly how much these creative stage adaptations may have diverged from or influenced the oral and printed accounts in circulation at the time. But Robin Hood's widespread presence in early English theatre indicates the legendary outlaws firm embedding in popular culture during the 16th century. Once established on stage, Robin Hood would continue as a perennial figure adapted in theatrical forms ranging from comedies to opera for centuries to come. Identifying a historical Robin Hood Historians have long tried to corroborate whether some real outlaw or band of outlaws might lie at the heart of the Robin Hood legend, but attempts to pin down the historical Robin Hood have proven frustrating. Matters are complicated by the fact Robert or Robin were exceedingly common names in medieval England, making links to the legendary figure speculative. For example, records show a Robert Hood or Hod 
exiled from Wakefield, Yorkshire, and eventually imprisoned in London in 1318. But there is no evidence this was the Robin Hood of renown. Efforts in the 17th century to definitively establish Robin Hood as a historical figure focused on Robert Fitzsooth, Earl of Huntingdon, said to have been active in opposing Prince John between 1193-1194. But later, historians found no such Earl existed and Fitzsooth to be a fanciful name fabricated to lend legitimacy to oral tradition. Prominent American historian J.C. Holt in 1982 concluded Robin Hood was solely the creation of the ballad makers. The names Robin Hood or Robe Hod do appear across dozens of medieval records between 1226 and 1396 in reference to criminals, fugitives, and bandits, but in no case do these documents confirm. These are mention of the famous outlaw. They offer no supporting details linking them to the Sherwood legend. At best, they indicate Robin Hood as a popular term for common outlaws, which may have influenced the legend, but direct evidence remains elusive. The Search for the Real Robin Hood Modern historians have thus shifted focus to searching for echoes of a real Robin Hood in the cronies and characters populating the stories. While Robin himself may be mythical, aspects like his feud with the Sheriff of Nottingham or his companions Little John and Will Scarlet could have roots in actual medieval outlaws. Place name evidence indicates the major settings associated with Robin Hood, like Sherwood Forest, and Barnsdale were real havens for outlaws and centres of resistance against Norman rule. Finds of remarkably preserved medieval longbows give credence to the tales of Robin Hood's deadly archery skills. Real bands of outlaws and poachers did in fact plunder wealthy travellers and abbey monks while cultivating legends among local peasants that could protect them. Even if Robin Hood himself never existed, the types of people and deeds in his stories certainly did in the heavily wooded and lawless regions of medieval England. The historical backdrop of Richard the Lionheart's absence during the Crusades, Prince John's abuses as regent, and Baron's rebellion against the monarchy root the Robin Hood tales in real periods of turmoil. The oppressive Sheriff of Nottingham character also fits with the actual duties of early sheriffs to collect taxes, enforce the forest laws, and hunt down fugitives. Archetypes and relationships in the legends mirror genuine medieval conditions and power dynamics, the seeds of truth underlying the myth. Ultimately, the real Robin Hood remains as elusive as the fictional outlaw hero himself, impossible to definitively identify despite centuries of scholarly pursuit. To enter the battle in Achilles' armor to rally the Greeks, though he ends up being killed by the Trojan hero Hector. This finally brings Achilles back into the war to seek revenge against Hector. The Iliad is one of the most influential and well-known works of literature in the Western canon. Composed by the ancient Greek poet Homer, the Iliad tells the story of the Trojan War and the epic wrath of the warrior Achilles. In this video, I'll be providing a full analysis and summary of this incredible epic poem, looking at its structure, characters, themes, and the context of its composition. Stick around, because we'll be covering a lot of ground in this classic work that's over 2,700 years old. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's start with some historical context. While the Trojan War itself is mythical, set around the 12th or 13th century BCE, most scholars believe the Iliad was composed around the 8th century BCE. Homer's epic would have been transmitted orally for generations before being put into written form. Ancient Greece in the 8th century BCE was experiencing a revival of sorts. This period saw expansions in trade, colonization, the growth of city-states, and the establishment of the Olympic Games. Plot Summary Now let's get into the plot summary. 
This epic poem covers just a few critical weeks during the 10th year of the war. Two of the main Greek warriors, the hero Achilles and King Agamemnon, get into a dispute over a captive woman. This quarrel causes Achilles to refuse to fight, and the Greeks start losing battles against the Trojans. The gods also get directly involved in the war, supporting one side or the other based on their divine alliances and whims. The Trojans eventually drive the Greeks back, which leads Achilles' close friend Patroclus to enter the battle in Achilles' armor to rally the Greeks, though he ends up being killed by the Trojan hero Hector. This finally brings Achilles back into the war to seek revenge against Hector. The two warriors fight an epic duel, ending in Hector's death at Achilles' hands. The poem ends with Hector's father, King Priam, pleading with Achilles to return Hector's body for proper burial rites. Major characters. Now let's go through some of the major characters. Achilles, the central hero of the Iliad, famous for his skill in battle. His quarrel with Agamemnon sets the epic in motion. Achilles struggles with rage, honor, and his fate as a warrior. Agamemnon, the proud and stubborn king of Mycenae and leader of the Greek army. His feud with Achilles divides the Greeks. Hector, the beloved prince of Troy and their greatest warrior. He leads the Trojan army against the Greeks. Hector's fate is tied to protecting his city and family. Odysseus, the legendary, clever, and cunning Greek warrior. He helps negotiate between Achilles and Agamemnon. Paris, a Trojan prince who took Helen from Greece, sparking the war. He is portrayed as vain and often cowardly. Helen, reputed to be the most beautiful woman in the world. She was married to a Greek king before being taken by Paris back to Troy. Patroclus, Achilles' devoted friend and companion. Patroclus takes Achilles' place in battle and is killed by Hector. Major themes. The Iliad explores many major themes related to war, civilization, mortality, and the human condition. Some key themes include wrath and rage. Achilles' anger at Agamemnon sets the whole epic in motion. The Iliad highlights the destructive nature of wrath. Honor and glory. The Greek warriors are driven by their Cleos, or glory in battle. Honor is sacred. Fate. Both gods and humans debate how much control they have over destiny versus their predetermined fates. Hubris. Many characters overreach and commit arrogant acts of excessive pride, which often leads to harm. Mortality. The inevitability of death looms over everyone, even the epic heroes and gods. Epic style and structure. Now let's discuss Homer's epic style and poetic techniques. The Iliad was meant to be recited orally. To aid memory and performance, Homer relies heavily on formulaic language. He repeats common epithets such as swift-footed Achilles, rosy-fingered Don, and Hector, tamer of horses. The epic is structured into 24 books or chapters. Each starts with an invocation of the muse, asking for inspiration to sing the story. There are many formal speeches by characters and elaborate comparisons or similes, like as a lion on the hunt. Homer also captures very minute sensory details, the glint of armor, the sounds of battle, gleaming wine pouring into cups. The granular nature of Homer's descriptions enlivens the Bronze Age world for his audience. Critical Analysis Let's move into some critical analysis of the deeper meaning and interpretation of the Iliad. An essential question is, who or what is to blame for the tragedy described? The gods manipulate events according to capricious whims. The warriors seek honor and glory through violence. Hubris causes repeated confrontations. Some readings see Achilles as a symbol of the alienation of the individual in a dawning mass society, like ancient Greece. There are questions about free will versus fate, the loss of humanity in war, and the proper way to live. The complex characterization of Hector also suggests he is a more nuanced, sympathetic figure than simply the enemy of the Greeks. Some note the strong anti-war perspective that underlies the Iliad's depiction of violence. Reception and Legacy Finally, let's talk about the lasting legacy of the Iliad. Building off the oral epic tradition, 
Homer's work strongly influenced other ancient Greek and Roman writers like Virgil, Ovid, and Lucian. In the modern world, the Iliad became a prominent part of Western education. Later, poets like Alexander Pope and John Keats composed works inspired by the Iliad. Contemporary movies and TV shows still depict versions of the Trojan War and draw on themes and characters from the epic. Ultimately, this ancient poem has incredible resonance that continues to this day. Conclusion So in summary, in this long-form video, we covered a full analysis of Homer's sprawling epic, from the historical background, to a plot and character overview, discussion of themes and style, critical interpretations, and its lasting legacy. The Iliad stands as a foundational text of the Western canon, and a work of profound storytelling. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into this brilliant ancient epic. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more classical literature summaries here on my channel.